ophthalmology is always going to be my first love. I'm grateful for what it's taught me as a surgeon and how it shaped my career. It really began as a medical student. I remember following a patient on their journey, which is typical of medical school training. And I was following an elderly patient. She was a sweet old lady that um, could have been your grandmother. And she had these dense white cataracts and complained of how she was robbed of her vision, not being able to read, and really no longer being able to see her grandchildren and play with them. And I remember just holding her hand as she was having her cataract operation. And she says she would squeeze my hand every now and again, just so nervous about the operation. And then the next day I was excited just to see this was my first time experiencing this, what the outcome would be. The moment I caught a glimpse of her, she beamed with joy. She was just full of joy and couldn't wait to tell me how she could read, how her vision was much more clearer and how the world and the colors was much more sort of vivid. And from that day onwards, it really made me think about how I wanted to make much more of an impact. So Ring's approach I often say it is probably one of the first true disruptions of the gene therapy space in the last 50 years. Ring Therapeutics was founded on the foundational question of what if there are viruses that live in and amongst us that don't cause disease? You know, do they exist? Um, if they do, what are they? Can we potentially harness their properties for good? And it turns out that there is a class of commensal viruses known as anelloviruses that have cohabited, they co-evolved within us for millions of years and they're non-pathogenic and they have unique properties. And so they've been able to hide and live inside different parts of our body that are developing tissue tropism, uh, a much needed property for the gene therapy space. And they've been somewhat immune stealth. They've been able to live in harmony with our immune system, allowing us to use and vectorize them where there are pre-existing neutralizing antibodies to conventional gene therapies, or being able to redose, which is the holy grail of gene therapy. So really foundationally discovering a new class of pioneering medicines through the delivery of um, nucleic acid medicines with our viral vectors. I grew up in humble beginnings. I grew up as a refugee from Vietnam. I remember my mom holding my hand as she cradled my sister and we were smuggled on to a boat under the cover of darkness and we had nothing but the clothes on our backs and the dream of a better life. Um, I then grew up in one of the most deprived areas of inner city London, but I was fortunate. I was fortunate to discover science and a passion for science. I was fortunate to be the first to study medicine um, from my school. And despite growing up poor, I knew at the age of six that life would be very different for me. I, I think I had the audacity at that time point in life to dream and to dream big. And despite having some of these hardships, um, I consider them blessings. I consider them blessings as they've made me the person that I am. They've shaped me and my thinking as a leader um, of a team, a remarkable team of individuals that bring therapeutics today. Thank you.